What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be mounting my Hanging With PA sign on the back of a trailer. So let's just get right into it, let's go. Hey guys, as you guys know, I have an open uh, 16 foot trailer and I wanted to do some signage on it. So when I go to events, we're trying to advertise it. I got flags, people saw the flags. So I figure, you know, when I see all these lawn care companies out there, they always have the signs on back of their trailers and so you can write their number down and, you know, call them and get your lawn cut. I said, look, I'm gonna use the same principle that they use, a sign made for the back of my trailer. And so I went ahead and did that. So I did watch some videos uh, from lawn care guys that mounted their signs on the back of the trailer. I think one of the guys I follow on YouTube, Brian's Lawn Care Service, you guys might have seen him or heard of him. If, if you have not, basically he did the same principle. I uh, went to his buddy's house, they installed this. They mentioned what the sign was made out of, but they didn't actually mention what the name of the sign is. Me trying to find the name of this stuff took forever. I finally called uh, a company and they're like, yeah, it's called Signboard. So I was like, oh, that, that makes complete sense. So essentially what they're doing is, is they're putting aluminum on the back and on the front, and then I guess in the middle they're putting, I guess, some sort of plastic or some sort of PVC. Arrow signs out of Little Rock, you guys killed it with this sign. That sign is a 58 by 24. So when I called Arrow Signs, he said, yeah, you know, it's one two day turnaround. I was like, ooh, okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and move with it. Within 30 minutes, he sent me an invoice for it. I paid it. I did all that Thursday and Friday morning. By Friday afternoon, that sign was already ready. A half a day turnaround for a custom sign. You guys have ever tried to get anything made custom? them in half a day without paying an out the nose for whatever you're buying because that's almost like same day delivery next day delivery that's ridiculous and so for him to get me this sign half a day and then for it to look exactly like the image i sent him one more and the price was completely fair i couldn't be happier with the signs if you guys are in the little rock area or i guess in the arkansas area hit up arrow signs they did an outstanding job outstanding i keep looking at it like it's to me it's like just a big business card so without further ado we're gonna jump into this install let's go probably gonna need at least two and a half inch elevator bolts i'd probably go with a three inch or three and a half you have your washers and then you have your hex nut so we're looking at a total of 1662 for your hardware you'll also need basically a spacer i just used the struck 40 as my spacer because that's what i had left over and just cut, I believe, two inches to create that spacer. So that's basically going to be your supplies. And obviously, of course, you will need a sign. So, so trying to figure out where the holes need to be. I did call the company, Aero Signs. They said there's no issue with drilling through. So he said just put some masking tape down or some painter's tape and you'll be fine. Kind of give you guys a representation of how big that sign is before it gets mounted. That's pretty much what we're looking at. It's 58 in length and 24 in height. Goal was basically to leave eight inches on each side. And so that's pretty much, because the gate's about 73-ish inches, so minus 16, eight inches on each side, and then leave about an inch to two inches on the from top to bottom. So basically it'll sit centered in there. So that's my goal. Brian, Brian, you want stretched up, is it? All right guys, so what we're doing right now is we put the sign on the back of the gate so that we can see where it's gonna sit on the gate. And then we're going to tape that down so it sits where we want it to sit. We're going to, that also then will allow us to drill our holes at the same time, then run the hardware and we're done. So let's get to it. The reason why I would run elevator bolts, A, because they're black, and then B, basically, you already have a washer on there. So that's going to hold. So I'm, I might have to paint these, but. We'll see. Got our makeshift paint booth over here. Ended up just painting up these elevator bolts just so that look a little bit blacker. They had a little bit of rust on them. So at least they'll look good when the sign goes on the first time. And then we went with all galvanized hardware. I guess you go with aluminum. And so then what we're gonna do is I got two sets of washers. I got some smaller ones, three eighths, and then some bigger ones. So essentially the bolt's gonna go, the elevator bolt's gonna go through there, and then the nut is going to go on the back, and it's basically gonna sit like this, but basically that's what it's gonna look like. So I wanted a bigger washer to hold the sign on with those grates. So that's basically what it's gonna look like. Take this schedule 40, cut this off in two inch increments. That's basically gonna be your space. And you can see, so that basically there's about a two inch gap from the mesh to this iron. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the structure 40 as a big spacer 
run our bolt through there. Put down the structure 40, spray paint them, use the good old hacksaw. Grab these bolts before it rains and then put some holes in this board. Let's go. I love the sign so much. I had arrow signs print me up two of these bad boys. I got one on each side. It's basically the same thing, just smaller. These are actually also what my business card looks like. All right guys, so I wanted to give you guys a secondary look of what we're looking at here, just in case some maybe the instructions weren't clear. Because as you can see, the elevator bolt is on the outside. You run it through the Struck 40 which I spray painted black. And then on the back, you put, uh, I put basically my two washers and then my nut. I used the big washer because the small washer, I didn't want it to pull through the gate. And so the big washer just gives more, I guess, of the gate for it to attach to. But that's, uh, that's essentially it. All right guys, so there's two things that I learned from this project. The first thing is, is we actually bought two and a half inch elevator bolts. And then I had to go back to the store and buy threes because the two and a halfs weren't long enough. If I was you guys, word of advice, I'd buy the three and a halfs. Uh, because then the more you tighten this down, the more it causes this to bend because it is aluminum. So just something to keep in mind get the three and a halfs, cut them down or threes. I wanted, I didn't really want much of uh, the bolt sticking through, but the two and a halfs were causing, it was just too much bending. And then it really wouldn't even work with the washer. So that was, that's the first thing I had to overcome. The second issue I had to resolve after testing this out was that the sign, even though it was completely centered and it looked great, it was too high up top. It was, there, was, there wasn't enough space because this lip right here is what is going to sit on the ground. And so what was happening was, is when I would let the tailgate down, pulling the four wheelers on or off, sometimes some of the rocks chipped my sign away. So what I ended up doing was, is I moved it further down. And so that when this gate, this top part hits the ground, there's about three to four inches in between the top of the gate and the sign. So technically it shouldn't hit the, the rocks. If you're doing this on concrete, you'll be fine or on grass or anything like that, you'll be fine. It's just that at all these off-road parks, there are a lot of times it's rocks and mud. And so when you let this tailgate down, this part sometimes sinks in. And so then the next thing it's gonna touch is this. And so since I'm out here, I know some people are more visual learners than my, like myself. And so, well, that's not what I wanted to do. So if you look at the sign, you can see that it's barely it's not on the ground, but if I had the sign closer to the top of it, when you put weight on it, it was causing the sign to dig in. So I still have to possibly, uh, I think, let's see if I can zoom in. I still might possibly need, I can't move it down any further, but that definitely is going to help from keeping rocks and, you know, basically from messing up the board. So because over here, you can see, it's about eh, a quarter inch, half an inch or so off the ground, off this corner. But so, what, you know, when you're on rocks, this kind of gets tore up. And so one of the things I, I had to do was I had to move the sign 
to the bottom of the gate to give me some more room so it doesn't get basically scratched up. I still bring a blanket with me and just cover the sign so that my sign doesn't get tore up. All right, guys, and that's another day hanging with your boy PA. I'm going to catch y'all next one. Peace.